Hey everyone, welcome again to Gear Facts. I have just uploaded a sound demo of the excellent Boss GT6 from 15 or 20 years ago. It's a great multi-effect system and I thought I'd give you another video about exactly how it operates because it does look a little bit confusing at first sight, but it really is actually a very user-friendly pedal. Obviously this is our main form of communicating with the machine, so any value can be changed just by rotating that one. By default it's in the mode where we're just selecting patches so instead of choosing a pedal there you can see the pedals lights moving along there as I turn the dial it's just selecting patches instead of us hitting these pedals with our feet so that's a handy way of doing it if you're sitting down and the pedals on top of a desk or you're sitting on the floor right in front of it with your guitar just below that you'll see the parameter buttons here there's no actual edit button what happens is whenever you change one of the values let's say we want to change our speaker type you'll see the main category that corresponds to that knob appear on the screen and then you can use your parameters to change values within there so under the speaker selection we can run through all of the settings that you'd expect level presence and so on with simple controls like bass, middle, treble and so on there are no parameters that you can change because it's just bass, middle, treble, it's all there ready to go however if you go over to our amp types here parameters are related and you can cycle through all of them by pressing the parameter key and you can change the value here so in essence any value that you change here will put you into edit mode where you can guide yourself around using the parameter buttons and turning the dial. Exactly the same concept works for the next line. Here we've got our overdrives and distortions. And once again, parameters will take us through the attributes of that particular distortion that you've chosen. To just rely on your amp drive sound and not have distortion, you just switch that button and you'll see that toggles between distortion on or off. Let's leave it on, and if you go to the next button here, there is variation type. So if you press that, each particular category of distortion has several variations. So if I switch over to fuzz, for example, there we are, 60s fuzz, and press type variation, there you can see it now. We've got 60s fuzz, octave fuzz, and muff fuzz. So three variations on the one category of distortion, and that's the same for all of the distortions there. The same applies to these amplifier sounds too. Press the main button here to put that on, and press type variation down here, and we'll see that we've got an orange amp there, rectifier, and if we go to other amp settings, matchless, several different kinds there, and there's something like 30 amp simulations in total there just by rotating the dial and trying the type variations. Combinations of these two will give you all kinds of different crunch tones and distortions so it's worth exploring the must be literally millions of combinations of values between those two. So now that you know all that everything down here is going to be a no-brainer as well. Switch on the delay and use your parameter keys to go between all of the parameters of your delay effect and there are several different kinds of delay too which you'll find by going right back to the left hand end delay is on turn your parameter dial and you'll see that how many kinds of delays have we got here looks like 10 different kinds of delay same again for chorus switch it on just with another press of the chorus button over to your parameters let's see how many types of chorus we've got Uh, all of the old boss classics there, Dimension, D Chorus. Once again, 10 different types. And then Reverb at the end. Works exactly the same way. Now over here, we've got a list of FX1 and FX2. These are mostly modulation effects. You can double up these effects. In other words, you can have both FX1 and FX2 running concurrently, which can be really good because you could have something like tremolo running with i don't know vibrato at the same time so there are a lot of creative possibilities by blending fx1 and fx2 very simple to set up they don't have dials of their own but they've got their own individual button there so you just press fx1 it lights up by default it's in the off mode though so press it again to switch it on 
And once again, we're back to our parameter buttons. Let's see, that's the acoustic guitar simulator there. Let's go back to FX Select, Pickup Simulator. So you can make your Telecaster sound like a Strat or something like that with the pickup simulators. That's quite an interesting one to experiment with. Uh, tremolo effect, slow gear, there are 11 or so effects to choose from there. Referring to that little list. Then you go to the FX2 button, if you want, FX2. Oh, it looks like it was already switched on. Okay, choose an effect that you like. Vibrato, Univibe, short delay. So you can have delay on top of delay there, by the way. So a short delay combined with the delay that you choose in the delay section. What else have we got? Humanizer, Auto Riff, Guitar Synth. These are all the fun ones. Particularly when you associate with them with the expression pedal just over here. Really crazy stuff happening, and you'll hear some of that in the demo that I just made. I'll put a link up to that one. If you're finding that your editing is not going well, just press the exit button to get out of that. It'll take you straight back to the patch page. It won't restore the settings that you've changed back to the default settings, but if you go out of the patch, say up to the next one, and then back again to, in this case, Metal Pan, everything will be back to its default values. So if you really don't like what you've come up with, it's quite easy to escape from all of that and start again. If, however, you did like the changes that you made, then clearly you can see that you've got a right button there. Press it not once, but twice, and then it tells you that it's copying your new values over the old values, and now it's locked in. Down a little bit further, we've got pedal assign here. That shows us that the expression pedal is currently on. Press it again and it's off. Parameter to the right and you can change the intensity of the expression pedal. So in this case, it's from zero through to 100% expression, but you could change that to something like 30 to 80% if you just wanted a soft wah, or you wanted to set minimum and maximum volume, that kind of thing. Keep pressing that parameter button to move to the right, and on the third screen, you'll find that you can assign a target for that expression pedal. And the AW is saying that it's associated with auto wah. By setting this value, the amount that we press the expression pedal over there will affect that particular parameter, like the peak of the auto wah, the rate of the auto wah, depth, and so forth. Now it's going through to other effects, overdrive, so we can control the amount of overdrive being fed into it through the expression pedal. The amount of bass, the amount of treble, it goes on and on and on. And now we're controlling the preamp parameters. Controlling speaker types, uh, it goes on and on. Equalization, that can be an interesting effect because it gives you expressive control over one particular parameter of equalization. Experiment with all of these guys, there's all kinds of interesting things here. Phaser rate, phaser depth. You get the idea, this list is just going to go on and on and on, must have at least 100, 150 different values that you can associate the expression pedal with. Anyway, let's move on. Output select will change the output signal slightly to match the kind of amp that you're running. Again, that's just something that you experiment with. Most of the time I'm just using headphones, so that'll just give me a really pure signal so I'll hear exactly what the pedal's putting out. But you can adapt your pedal to work with all different kinds of amplifier setups. Tuner and bypass, well that's a no-brainer, that just switches on the tuner and switches off all the effects so you'll hear your guitar clean when that is pressed. In the master effect section, you'll find your noise reduction. Press that a couple of times. Noise suppressor comes on. Once again, use your parameter keys and you can change the threshold and release time. Then it goes on to the master patch level. Master beats per minute. This is a good one too, where you can change the actual effects chain. So you can do some clever things like maybe put your delay pedal ahead of your overdrive pedal or something like that to give a bit more of an acid rock feel or one thing I like to do is put phaser in front of a really heavy distortion. That can be a really good effect also. So that's another good one to experiment with, and you'll find that right here. Then you've got utilities. I won't go through each of the individual utilities, but these are general setups for the overall values of the pedal. Once again, we're going through the parameter keys and looking through all of the master utilities that we can change. They're all quite straightforward. Like I said, in one 10-minute video, I can't go through every single one of them. 
there's some MIDI controls there too, which is, I guess, for your advanced users, I've never got into that. You can use that. You can use that to set your control pedal to external functions, which could be really handy if you're using external equipment. And then on the bottom right, we've got manual mode. So now what happens is several pedals will light up. And as you can see, they're all either on or off because what we're doing there is controlling preamp, overdrive and distortion, delay, chorus, etc. as if it were an actual series of pedals. Some guitar players just like to set up the pedal sounds that they want and just leave it in that mode for their whole gig, just switching pedals on and off as they go. So if you'd rather do that than switch between entire patches, then manual is a very handy feature. So that's my quick overview of the Boss GT6. Brilliant multi-effect pedal. I guess it does look a little bit dated with the color and everything, but if you're like me and you just like to enjoy your playing and have a whole lot of fun using some crazy sounds and some super extreme sounds, that kind of thing, it's just a really enjoyable pedal to play. It's great fun. That's the Boss GT6. I'll stop talking now. Thanks for watching Gear Facts. Look forward to seeing you next time, guys.